Hello and welcome back to the channel. So in the previous lecture we have seen all about some introductory part of Kafka and how it uses. So in this lecture we'll get our hands dirty and work with Kafka on our HDB sandbox. So without further ado, let's get into it. So if you're not familiar with Kafka, I'll recommend you to watch the previous tutorial to learn what is real time streaming and how it is useful to ingest streaming data into your Hadoop system or any other data storage system and do the data analytics in real time and it is the backbone of many fortune 500 companies for their data solutions so without wasting any time i have already kept our hdb sandbox in running condition and you have to make sure that all the services are running fine without any issue so if you don't have kafka service running on your sandbox just log into the ambari as admin and you can start the service so as you can see in this ambari we have the kafka service running without any issues and we have our Kafka broker in ready condition as you already know that Kafka is already installed in our HDB sandbox so we don't have to go through the setting up hassles and do the configuration we can just kick it off from our putty terminal so without wasting any time just open the putty terminal and log in as murray underscore dev so you know the password murray underscore dev and here just to make sure that you have all the privileges we will log in as a root user so just give the password so if you don't know the password so the for the first time users it will be like hadoop all in smaller case and for the ones who have already set it you just have to remember it so just give it that i'm hoping that i remember that yeah so we have logged in as a root user so we need to go where the kafka is extracted in our sandbox so you have to just go to the directory as user hdp current and here the directory is kafka broker so here if you just go ls so here are all the directories where we have the bin directory config and all the libraries which are pre-installed in our sandbox so we just have to go to the bin directory where we'll find all the executable files so if, so if you give ls here are all the consumer topics as well as producer scripts ready so we can just kick it off this predefined shell script to create our topics and use the already created consumer and producer application but first we need the topic in our cl kafka cluster so i hope you already know that topic is nothing but you can relate it as a table in a relational database so it stores your data or you can say the event streams for some particular time period so without wasting any time we'll just create our topic and we can just insert some data into it just to let you know the power of kafka and how it ingests data all in real time so to create the topic we have the file like kafka topics.sh so to kick off that file just give like dot slash kafka topics.sh and we have to pass the arguments as create as we are creating the topic and now we need to provide the address for our zookeeper so I hope you already know that Zookeeper is also part of the Hadoop ecosystem. So you have to mention the address where Kafka can communicate with Zookeeper. As you already know that Zookeeper is also a pillar of Kafka architecture. So to give that just give like Zookeeper and Zookeeper's address is sandbox-hdp.hortonworks.com So if you are using HDP 2.6.5 then you have to follow the exact command. But if you are using like 2.5 version I have given all the commands in the description below. So instead of the zookeeper address, instead of sandbox-hdb, it's like sandbox.hdb. So you have to make sure that you're giving correct address to your zookeeper. And it is running at a service 2181. Zookeeper is available at this port. Then you have to give the replication factor. So I hope you already know that replication factor is very important when you're dealing with distributed systems, but here, we only have one node. It does not make any sense to give any replication factor beyond one. So we'll give it as one. And we have to give the partitions as well. So partitions also we can give one because we are just messing around to get you the familiarity of Kafka. So just give like one. And we have to give at last the topic name. So give the topic and the topic name is, um, we can give like test topic. You can give any name of your choice. So if everything looks good, hit enter. So as you can see, test topic has been created. So just to make sure, we will list all the topics now. So again, you have to kick off the same file, kafka topics.sh. We will give like list here 
and also you have to provide the zookeeper address as well so give like zookeeper again give sandbox.hdp.hortonworks.com and it is listening to the port 2181 and hit enter so this will give you all the list of topics present in your kafka service yeah so i made the mistake so you have to give the zookeeper address of sandbox dash hdp not dot so for version 2.615 you have to give the dash here so give dash and again rerun it so as you can see these are the topics present on our kafka cluster so this atlas entities hook and this consumer offsets are nothing but already created topics so here is our test topics created on our kafka cluster so we are ready to ingest some data into it so for that purpose we need to kick off the consumer application as well as the producer application so the task of the producer application is to listen to any incoming new data and write it into the kafka topic and then consumer then listens to the newly entered data in kafka topic and displays it for further processing so for this purpose you will going to ingest some text data directly from the command line so for that purpose we need to kick off the producer application which will produce the data in single command line instance and will kick off the other command line instance using putty to kick off the consumer application which listens to our created topic which is test topic for our incoming data so are you ready okay then so producer application is also lies in the bin directory so if you give ls you will see the kafka console producer.sh and kafka console consumer.sh files so first step would be to kick off the producer file to ingest some data into it so we'll give like dot slash kafka dash console dash producer dot sh then we have to give the broker list here so just give like broker dash list then we have to give address for our broker which is sandbox dash sdp dot hortonworks dot com colon and we need to give any port which is available right now so i know that the port 6667 is available right now so we'll give the same and we have to give the topic name so the topic name is test topic so if you hit enter as you can see we can enter any data here so we can say like we are learning kafka on hdp we can say we are ingesting data so all it is doing is it is ingesting data in our test topic but how we can validate it I guess you guessed it correctly. We need to kick off the consumer application now. But how we can do that? So for that we'll create another putty session to kick off our consumer application. Okay, so we have the producer application which is running. So we'll just create new session here. So we'll just give like Maria underscore dev log into that and again log in as a root user to get you all the privileges. Use the password. And here again go to the Kafka directory now. So give like user hdp slash current slash Kafka broker and the bin directory. Give like slash bin. And here if you give ls, we have the Kafka consumer application. Here you can see the Kafka console consumer is here. So again give like dot slash Kafka dash console dash consumer dot sh. We need to give the zookeeper now. And we don't need to pass the broker list here, but in version 2.5, we need to give the broker list and give our address to 6667 port. But here in version 2.6.5, we don't need to do that. We just need to give the zookeeper address, which is localhost colon 2181, as you already know. And you have to give the topic. So the topic you already know test underscore topic and you have to pass the argument as from beginning so it will also listen to the data which we have already ingested so here we have ingested two lines of data in our topic so, and so we'll pass the argument like from dash beginning so if you hit enter i guess i have missed the zookeeper e yeah i guess this looks good so if you kick off this yeah as you can see we got the already inserted data in our topic so let me simulate a real time data streaming scenario so here in one window we have the producer script running which is nothing but a producer application which ingests the data into our kafka topic so here our kafka topic is test underscore topic and here we have the consumer application which consumes the data so this is not a very high level thing this is just to let you know how it works under the hood and we are just ingesting 
some text data but in real world scenario you will be getting millions of rows every hour in real time which are which could be coming from iot devices or any sensors or coming from any social media websites and you have to process it in real time so that's where kafka is so powerful and backbone of big companies like linkedin and netflix so if you just give like this is second line and as you can see we got the message in just a second also if you can give like any raw data as you can see so we are getting all this data in real time so this is just to let you know the power of kafka so we are ingesting the data from one end and consuming it from the other end so this is how kafka works under the hood and how we can simulate a real time data streaming platform by using this service so this was just a basic demo from the command line but in the next lecture we will be working with some data which we will ingest from a website we will write it on a kafka topic and process it on our hadoop cluster so i hope you like this lecture and stay tuned for more such interesting tutorials so once everything is done just close your sessions and then you can just shut down your hdp sandbox by giving the acpi shutdown this is very important otherwise if you give like force shutdown it may occur some issues on the next boot so i hope you like this lecture so please subscribe to our channel and also ring the notification bell to get the latest updates and don't forget to follow us on our social media which i have linked in the description below thanks for watching